permission to go through you to ask the mover and the seconder um, what their intentions are in regards to this. Exactly. So that was okay. prior to, to you taking your call. So my question through you, um, Your Worship, is to ask Councillor Stewart and Councillor Sayers, who was the seconder, as to are their intentions in regards to this amendment so that we, there will be two resource consen consents lodged. That um, is through you. Second, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm asking both the mover and the seconder if, if in fact, that is the intention of the amendment. Um, point of so order, not, Mr Chair. Yeah, point, point, point of, of order, order, Mr Chair. Councillor Walker. Is it, um, is it appropriate for a, a councillor to ask um, questions around the intent when the intent here is is quite clear, and you've also you've already covered off the issue around the resource consent, and I would have thought answered the question of Mr. Filipina. Uh, I, I, I think the answer to the question is that the intent is, as the words suggest, not to say there has to be a separate resource consent, uh, Councillor Filipina, simply to say that will be part of the negotiation, and it will anyway. So I mean. I, I look to my second, a councillor Fletcher, whether she's prepared to accept that. Uh, I don't see a problem with it as worded. Well, mm. um, I come back to you on that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah please come back call? to me on it. No, uh, just, I've got it. Can I just answer? Yeah. Well, please, I, councillor Stewart. Okay, just um, an answer of councillor Al Filipina yep. is that I wanted to give the opportunity for this table to, to actually have the opportunity to discuss it and, and I'm quite happy with, with what the Mayor has had to say, so thank you. No, no, that, that's good. It, it, as long as now I know it's clear that it's not I just uh, wanted uh, to it get to the two resource consent, so I'm glad. everybody so cool. everybody had an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not. No, no, but it's not about Sorry. consent. Um, it's Councillor Lee. Oh, thank, you, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I don't want to get into um, the substantive issues here. It's just the process we're I talking about now. Enough and the resource consent. Um, I have to say, um, I'm disappointed that the amendment that Councillor Walker put up has been ruled out, because I'm happy to second that. So, sorry, you, you I misunderstood. Didn't point of we order. Didn't put it up. Uh, we haven't, I haven't ruled it out. I've said I'm happy to accept it, Councillor. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, Mr Mayor. He's, OK, thank you, Wayne. There's he, nothing there by um, Councillor Walker. Mr Mayor, um, if, if this amendment goes through, it will be approved. Uh, both options will be approved, right? Mm. Is that correct? For negotiation. Um, approved. Um, yes. But CG, uh, sorry, F says, agree to use a single hearing process through direct referral to the Environment Court available under the Resource Management Act and lodge the resource consent applications for the approved option. That really will be approved options. Now, that's, can I say that's very sensible? There, if you pass this, there will be, this other option will be included in the resource consents, and that, and that is very, very sensible. And I'll tell you why. I've taken a call um, in regard to this matter from a high official um, who makes a plea, who makes a plea that we include both options in the resource consent process, because there's no point in exploring or negotiating um, two options when one of them is technically been ruled out by a bureaucratic mechanism of this council. That's not good for our relationship with the government, our relationship with the minister and our relationship with the public. The plea is from a high official um, that we include both options. Um, so I make that plea. So if I got to any other calls on the amendment, I think you've... I have you've, a question. Yes, I had... No, no, no I'm, I'm sorry, I'm only taking calls. I'm not taking questions. Uh, Councillor Cooper, on the amendment. Oh, I guess my... I did have a question, but I think it's been answered um, because we're not talking about a consent here, and I was concerned that um, this might um, delay us putting in our resource consent for the basin... Um, application, but um, I, I, for me, I, I can't support this because I actually, the brain fade I had in my earlier speaking turn was the word compromise, but I don't think this is a good compromise. The other compromise, compromise I talked about was a good compromise. This is a bad compromise because I don't think it is, you know, designed to weigh up 
this or that. We've actually had the advice, and I and I, I actually take exception to the pejorative use of some bureaucrat, which was just said before. Actually, we've got highly skilled people that this is what they do. I said that's, a bureaucratic mechanism order, involving us. Order, the councillor so will not, my words. councillor, you will not intervene when you don't have the floor. I will not accept calumnies. Will not intervene when you don't have the floor. Please continue, councillor Cooper. So for me, I think that, you know, to, we actually put, this is pretty much the same as the last meeting we had. Yeah. So we just, I don't know why we're here if we're going to decide exactly the same thing. Today was about choosing one. And, and I'd ask you, Mr Mayor, position. why would you do that? I, you said you, you were happy to accept it, but I think it just allows for more filibustering and stalling. Um, you know, we, we just have to make a decision today. That's been spelled out very, very clearly, that if we don't, we won't, we won't be able to deliver on this. So then if we, do, if we don't do that today, we may as well not even do it, because it won't be possible. And I don't want to be you know, an Aucklander welcoming a cup that's not ready and they get here and nothing's ready and oh, it's okay, we're just, we're just waiting on our second consent because we're not quite sure and we've got to have a variation on this one and, you know, and the other thing for me is, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to take on board a high official. I don't even know where that high official comes from. Which organisation? You know, I can't take that as a directive, quite personally. I mean, I just think it's a bit, a bit absurd. So for me, I can't support this because I support the option that's recommended today for the very reasons that have been uh, in the report. It's very detailed. And so I think if we do this, we're just trying to, we're being a bit cute. Well, cute and trying to please everybody. But look, we know when you make decisions, you're never going to please everybody, but we've got to do the best decision we can given the information, the time and the money we have and what we're trying to achieve here. So I'm satisfied that the um, substantive um, motions there are the ones that I will support. So I can't support this, Mr Mayor. Clarification? Thank, thank clarification, you very much. Mr uh, Mayor? I don't, don't think there is such a thing as a point of clarification, but <laughs> uh, give it a go. Uh, uh, OK. <laughs> I, I'll just draw your attention to, to the various motions here. C states quite clearly that the Mayor and the Chief Executive are given the delegated amendment. authority to continue negotiations yep. with the Crown. Yeah. Can, you and keep, then, can you keep this point really brief? I'm trying please, to be Councilor. as quick as I can, Mr Mayor. And then D delegates authority to the Mayor and the Chief Executive that's to right. complete negotiations and lodge the resource consent application. That's correct. Nowhere yep. is there any mention as to, the, as to what the resource consent application yep. is. You're, you're quite correct, Councillor. So I've agreed with your point on yourself that. Yourself and the and Chief Executive. So you and are I have both clarified this. I'm going to make the call. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Councillor. I now have uh, Councillor Newman. You're speaking to the amendment, Councillor. Yeah, very briefly, Mr. Chair. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if we're going to open this back up, and I'm not, a I'm not about to do this, but the logical thing to do would be for those of us who actually supported Halsey to put the Halsey debate option back up there as well. And let's just really regress, regress back yep. to where we were at the last meeting and have all three options up there. This is, um, I respect that there are people around the table who don't like the Wynyard Basin option and they want to go to um, whatever means they can to try and get the Wynyard Point variant location option up there as the primary um, option for consideration. Um, Chair, frankly, I, I wanted Halsey, and so the Wynyard Basin option, as has been proposed by Rod Marler today, isn't actually my preferred option either. But I'm not going to be the asshole who voted uh, in a way which meant that we couldn't get the America's Cup to Auckland at all, which is where this is about to head if we can't get something lodged so that we can actually proceed with something. You know, if you go down to the Viaduct Harbour, the reason why it looks pretty good is because we won the America's Cup in 1995 and did something. Made a decision. Okay. Um, so, um, Wayne, uh, who's busy talking, I, 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 I can't, I absolutely appreciate the opportunity for colleagues to debate their point. I welcome it. 
I have listened to people speak not once but several times this morning, and I want to have something to say on the substantive item too, Mr Chair, shortly, to reflect some of the concerns in my community, but I can't support the amendment because this amendment simply continues a debate at beyond the point that is safe and we have to land something, and what we're landing isn't actually my preferred option, but something has to happen, or the America's Cup is going to de be defended somewhere <coughs> other than Auckland. Thank you. I'm not sure about the technical term you used during your speech, but we'll overlook well, that. Well, many people would um, think that. Counsel <laughs> Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Hills. Uh, yeah, thank you, um, Mayor. Look, look, we have to make hard decisions here, and I am. This is another decision about not making a decision. Yeah, exactly. I was vehemently against the 230 metre extension of Halsey, really against it. I tried to get it taken off the original options um, by an amendment, and I lost it a long time ago. Um, and so I thought, actually, where we got to with the agreement, the discussions with Team New Zealand and others for a third of what it was going to be, you know, down to 75, I thought, okay, that that is reasonable. That is. That's an okay space we're heading. Um, we had full um, pedestrian access and access right around those, those sheds and out to the water side. This other option does not give us any access to the public around the water side um, of the, sorry, the Wynyard Point one. Of course, I don't want an extension, but this was a good um, compromise that all of us unanimously supported, I thought, or nearly all of us, and then, then we're going again to tell the mayor, and, and you, I'm sorry, um, Phil, you said, uh, Mayor Goff, you said that, you know, I support this amendment and put up, but I'm going to negotiate one. If we pass this today, technically it expects you to negotiate equally with both you options. Yeah. The yes. resolution says you're equally negotiating. So it does not give us a position of the council. Also, if we go for a government position, and then we have to share half of any extension of costs. I would prefer an option where we say, if you push us to a different decision, you can pay the full the cost lot. of that decision. Um, I, I'm sort of like, it's, it's all about looking like we're doing something, yep. and I'm really a bit annoyed. We're being told by our officials it's basically impossible to do all these other things with the, the Wynyard Point option, um, and I thought that we got to a good place last time. So I, I I'm sorry, I'm going to have to oppose this because it's fine. basically what you're saying is that it's not going to be that anyway or it's not going to be your position. Um, so I just, we just have to make a decision and stop making it look like we're not making decisions when we are. You know, like it's just very confusing for the public, very confusing. Thank you, Councillor Hills. Councillor Fletcher. Oh, thank you. Mr Chairman, uh, Your Worship, you asked for my view as to whether this could be incorporated um, as the seconder of your motion. Um, I, um, I have given that consideration, um, and I'm particularly mindful of um, uh, the support that I would generally show for Councillor Stewart and Councillor Sayers and, and um, uh, Councillor Walker. Um, and I do uh, think it's really good and healthy that we have some robust debate around this table. But looking at it, um, from my perspective, if you were to apply standing orders um, uh, correctly, you would find that <coughs> this is in actual fact a direct negative to the objectives of today. Yeah. So from my perspective, as much as I respect uh, the opinions of those who have put this up, um, from I believe it should be ruled out of order. and. Um, it is a direct negative. Um, we've had as much information as we can possibly hear about the importance of the, t the time frame. Um, it is time for leadership on this, and whilst it, it may, you know, it may test the, the, this meeting, um, I think uh, Auckland and New Zealanders are requiring us to show leadership on this. I've heard sufficient evidence today that this is not the option that we should be proceeding with in a, in a responsible sense. So in terms of good stewardship, um, I, if, if you choose to accept it and we vote on it, um, I, I would want to vote against it, but I am not willing to um, have this incorporated in, into the main motion and uh, would encourage others to vote this down because of the, um, the difficulties that it will give you and the CEO in terms of negotiation. We were trying to give a very clear point. Um, you have carefully explained to us that David Parker is not expressing particular preference. He's just keeping those options open. 
for the right information. Well, we've got our information as council. Let's now have our council position and allow you to, in a mature way, go and have some meaningful discussions with the minister. Yep. Uh, thank you, councillor. I'll just make a ruling on that point. Uh, I won't rule it out of order as a direct negative, but I've listened carefully to your arguments and I accept your arguments. Uh, while it wouldn't make a difference in the sense that it will be there as a basis for negotiation and doesn't tie us into two consents, I think if you wanted to give uh, an indication of where councillors stand on what is possible, then you would vote against the amendment. Uh, Councillor Sayers. Yes, uh, th uh, thank you, uh, uh, Your Worship. Um, as the seconder, I'd like, just like to speak to this because, um, uh, and it's been good to put it out to, for debate. The reason why um, I did second the motion was to create the debate, Your Worship, and to listen to your, I was particularly interested in, what, in your comments, and it certainly wasn't just to put... Um, put people's mind at ease, and I think the Councillor Stewart's already touched on it, wasn't to create an opportunity for a second consent, certainly didn't want to go down that avenue at all. But uh, it really the purpose was um, to get it out and um, some transparency around that it was an option, and you addressed that straight away as soon as you spoke to it, Mr Mayor, which was, which was really what I wanted to hear. So, and the objective was really to arm you with what you need, the ammunition you need when you go down and, and talk to the Crown, not to uh, weaken your position at all. So in light of the debate, uh, in light of what you said in terms of it will be on the table and part of it anyway, I, uh, I would be happy to withdraw seconding it and, and move us back uh, to our original position. I'm, I probably, um, I suspect the Councillor Stewart is in agreement with that. After listening to the debate. Just vote against. Yes, so thank, thank you for that. Thank you. So the, that, I think that does simplify it and yeah. it's yeah. withdrawn. Yeah. I think yeah. councillors can take, yeah. can take a little bit of comfort on either side of the argument. It will be part of the negotiation, but I think that <coughs> we're obliged to tell the government the practical difficulties that looking at another alternative would provide, given the time frame we have. So thank you very much for the mover and seconder for withdrawing that. We go back to the substantive debate, and uh, uh, people who haven't spoken yet on the substantive debate. I've got well, Councillor Darby. Um, I have a question. A question. Yep. Uh, strictly out of order, but try it, and then we'll hear from Councillor Casey. Uh, Councillor Darby first. Sorry, I did, I did um, should have done, put this before. So just uh, in terms of paragraph 11, the hazardous nature of the facilities on the variant option are highlighted as a uh, significant risk. And there's a reference there to uh, advice from a risk, a specialist, or there, there was specialist risk advice received. Um, who was, who gave that advice? And second to that, was the Environmental Protection Authority was their, was their advice sought on the same matter? And if so, what is it? Uh, a technical question, Rod Marler. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, the, uh, the professional entity that has given advice to council over many years is an organisation called Sherpa. They're, they're based in, in Australia. And they assist in providing um, information around uh, the risk contours, the separations that are required, um, what activities can or cannot happen adjacent to, uh, to those facilities. And they have updated their reports and um, um, they, in fact, their officials were out here this week in discussion with us. Uh, they also were in discussion with MB officials around uh, and answered their questions also. So there's been um, a, a full and um, an open discussion around the level of risk and understanding what those hazards could be. Okay. And the second part of the question, was the advice of the EPA sort? Yes, it was. The, the, the chief executive of the EPA accompanied the minister in one of the side visits. No, I, the advice. I don't mean somebody came with somebody else. Yep. I mean their advice from the Environmental Protection Authority. Can 
the most appropriate um, advice is through the Ministry for the Environment, and we're working with those officials on this work. Just following back the point about Sherpa, Sherpa's work has been consistent through all the development of the Winyard Quarter plan, so their technical advice has been built into the unitary plan and informs land use decisions. So it's not a one-off technical report, it's a consistent approach to land use responses to hazardous substances in Winyard Quarter and the risks that are associated with those. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll take one more question. It's, it's, it, it is out of order to take questions when we're into the debating part of it, but the issue is important, and sometimes a question can elucidate some important information in, in our making our decision. Councillor Casey. Yeah, I'm hoping this one will. It's about E and the interest of the government in the Winyard Point variant. A lot of people are watching this debate today, and I'm really interested to see which high official has been in the ear of my colleague Mike Lee. The high official that called me at 11.17am this morning was the Honourable David Parker from Buenos Aires. He made the plea to include both options in the resource consent. Thank you. Can't do it, can you? Never heard an elected representative called an official before, but there you go. Uh, right, we now have Councillor Newman. Chair, um, I think that... Um, I have listened very carefully to every presentation, uh, every speech today, and I want to acknowledge Rod Mahler and um, Panuku uh, for the report. Um, I, I, I think that the report is a compromise on what the actual option should be, and I suspect that there will be some officials who may quietly harbour that view as well. But. Um, we have to land something. Uh, I listened uh, very carefully to what Councillor Collins said because, and I, and I very much appreciated what Councillor Casey said. Uh, it, sing. And sang. She sang. sang yeah, very nicely. Sang. Uh, I'm not going to sing. Um, <laughs> it, would be, it would be torturous for everyone else. Um, but, yeah, you look, I mean, in my ward, uh, one of the issues that I'm dealing with at the moment, the the, the un, unpleasant issue of illegally dumped rubbish uh, which piles, um, the shitty subgrade roading uh, in Takanini, which continues to linger as a problem. Uh, eight months uh, that we haven't had Parataco Road in place because we're digging it up and redigging it up to put in pipes. Um, you know, I got an email this morning uh, from Life uh, from from Rami, who who is working um, with Link people, and I can advise that we've identified 30 rough sleepers in the Manurewa Town Centre, nine of whom have been housed so far, and as of tomorrow, uh, that number will be up to 14. So that's the kind of progress that's been made there. It's not the kind of topic that is subject to much debate around this table, although it probably should be. Uh, but today we're dealing with the America's Cup, Your Worship. Um, I make the point, Your Worship, that even though this is uh, very much, um, I think, elite sport, and it is triggering a debate that um, probably on a day-to-day you know, situation in terms of how it affects my community in Manurewa and Papakura. This is so foreign for most of them because they wouldn't come down to the waterfront uh, to go and have a look at those beautiful big yachts. Um, if you ask some of the young people what they did in the holidays in my ward, uh, the highlight for them was going to the supermarket. Um, but the reality is that there are opportunities that derive from the hosting of the America's Cup which are so intrinsically valuable to Auckland and have real potential value for the young people who live in my community. Um, I have been attending uh, senior uh, prize givings in, at secondary schools in my ward. Many of the young people in, in my ward won't get a bursary. Uh, but there's a potential for them, and I'm very sad about that because I'd like them to go to university. But there's real potential for them um, if there are options available to gain apprenticeships, um, to pursue uh, careers 
and I know a lot of young people in my ward that would love to be boat builders. Uh, they would love the benefit of wage and salary opportunities uh, in the industries associated with the buoyant marine sector. Um, and I have to uh, give my consideration to how these decisions affect them. Um, do I think that this is um, balanced in terms of are we giving consideration to this issue uh, ahead of all the other issues that I'm dealing with on a daily basis? Yes, probably. But the reality is that this is something that does create a legacy for Auckland, and it's not just about the physical infrastructure. The legacy has to be about we took a decision to actually invest uh, in a piece of economic development um, that is uh, very important and a buoyant marine industry uh, with the associated employment opportunities is something that is very attractive for me. So we have to move forward and I will be voting for the recommendations that are set out. Uh, thank you very much, councillor and councillors. Um, this has been a long discussion once again. We had a long discussion several weeks ago. Um, I've allowed the discussion to run because I think it's an important discussion for us as a council, for us as a city, and for the country as a whole. Um, I want to address first of all the question that uh, Councillor Collins raised, because on the last of these occasions we had a unanimous vote in favour of hosting the America's Cup here. Let's be clear about this, if we don't host it in Auckland, there is no other place in New Zealand that is suitable to host it. So that will be about uh, the Cup being hosted somewhere else, and you say, so what? Well, I actually think there's a lot of reasons why most New Zealanders from all walks of life, from all parts of our community, want to see this Cup raced in New Zealand. The first is, is I guess, just a matter of pride. I can't think of many events in the city that result in 90,000 people attending a parade like they did earlier this year in support of the America's Cup. And I walked down the side of the road, I think with the Deputy Mayor, and we talked with people, the, the genuine pride and happiness about that event was, was obvious for everybody to see. They weren't people wearing their business suits uh, from any elite, they were a cross section of New Zealanders. And they were proud at the sportsmanship that the Kiwis had shown and they were proud about the technology and proud about, here was another event where our relatively small country was top of the world. And I think of those people that Kathy, uh, Councillor Casey sang about, but you know, the song could have been about the hospitality workers that will be, have jobs created by the sheer amount of expenditure in the city. It could be about our taxi drivers, they're not the elite of New Zealand. It could be about the construction workers that do the work out there. It could be about the maritime workers, the blue collar workers that will gain probably several hundred million dollars worth of work because of it. Now I didn't come up with the figure of four to eight thousand jobs, that was a government figure. I didn't come up with the figure of half a billion to a billion dollars that this is cut would be worth. That was a Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment figure. But it did stack up with the figures I'd seen from 1999 and 2003. So is there a benefit to our city and to our country? Yes, through all of those things, but also the chance to showcase our city in a unique way to the world. A beautiful city, a beautiful harbour, top technology, top sportsmanship, those are things that are worthwhile. And if you look at the Google figures from yesterday, I know Councillor Collins follows that pretty closely, you'll see that the America's Cup was one of the top issues Googled across New Zealand. You know, those, those, those figures are there. Now, what about, what about the motion that we've got in front of us? I was actually quite keen. The, my first preference was the Wynyard Point. I thought there's a chance that we could do some really exciting things there. And I was more than happy when I talked to David Parker about looking at different variants on that. The Wynyard Point option, and then that didn't seem to work, so the variant that we can put it in, uh, you know, moving into the ASB car park. Uh, I, think, I, think it's a, I think it's a valid variant to examine, and it will be examined in the discussions that we'll be having. But when we've put our professional staff, both local council 
council controlled organisations and government officials together. They've worked on the same information, the same facts, and they've come back and told us this. They've said to us, and you've heard it from Rod Marler today, that we would be absolutely struggling to get a consent process through on time if we worked on the variant. Now, they're not imagining that. They're not faceless bureaucrats, Councillor Lee. They're people that we pay faceless. professional bureaucratic mechanism. Don't yeah, put yeah. false words in my mouth. I think we all understand. It does know you no honour. Councillor, I didn't interject you know on you. When you were making your personal remarks, I'll call on you not to interject on me. It's uncalled for. OK. 